June is going to be a big month for me. There's no racing in June, but with the training I do this month, if I improve my racing next month in July, then I'm going to Masters Nationals in August. Hey cycling community, this is Steve Grusis, the Cycling Greek. There are three things I need to work on to make nationals happen for me. Increase my sustained climbing power, increase my top end and its repeatability, and increase my end of race strength. Nothing too hard, right? Today's workout is designed to work on the second two items. This is a race pace workout. It's actually perfect for me because I did the same workout pretty much with the same people two weeks ago. This therefore gives me the opportunity to see if I've improved in those areas in the last couple weeks. When I last did this, I got dropped on the way out and on the way back at two critical areas. It is these two areas I'm going to focus on to see if I've improved, if at all. We have a bit of a cross headwind going out. I, like the others, am having to maintain at least 300 watts just to barely go 22 miles an hour on my pole. Once we hit the town of Fryant, we turn left into the wind and start going up this broken bridge wall. To give you a good idea on how much a better climber my teammate Terry is than I am, I am doing between 350 and 450 watts to stay out of the wind beside him. Because of this group's diversity and climbing ability, once we get to the top, we roll easily until we all regroup and then we continue on the pace we were doing. This ride, whether this course or another, is done every Tuesday and Thursday by teammates Terry and Robert, and also by Janine. Janine is a very strong rider who focuses on ultra marathon events. She's done RAM and she's done various 500 mile races. She doesn't do these events just to complete them, she does them to win them. I would equate her to a very strong women's Cat 3 rider who, with specific training, could easily be in the mix in the Cat 2s. Jumping forward to the top, Janine is not that far behind us. Sprinter, non-climber Robert is behind her. I've been able to stay with Terry even though my heart rate is right about 95-96% of its max. Once we complete our rolling regroup, it'll be back to race pace as we approach the point where I got dropped before. And through the Manchego video, we jump to that point now. When we take the right turn, this is where all hell breaks loose. As Terry takes the turn, he immediately opens up the throttle. You can't see it at the moment because the view is blocked because I'm sucking on his wheel at 550 to 650 watts. But in the distance ahead of us, you can see the top of this climb. And last time, two weeks ago, I got dropped with about 30 meters from the top. Relative to the turnaround point, I never caught him after that. At this point, I was starting to get concerned that I was going to get dropped before 30 meters to go. I'm just keeping at it. You'll notice that both of us are hugging that painted line. The roads are okay, but that line is super smooth. Now there's some cut up sections, but he's using that to go faster and I'm using that to go faster too. As you can see, I'm able to make it back onto his wheel, but we are about halfway done. And so my concern is that he's gonna be opening this up again. Depending on whether my heart rate monitor is working correctly or not, my maximum heart rate is either 158 or 161. In either case, my heart rate right now is 151. That puts me right around 95% of max. That is what I'm using this ride to work on. I'd been producing a lot of lactate, particularly on this section. I'm training my body to filter out the lactate even faster. The faster I can get rid of those hydrogen ions whenever my heart rate drops just a couple beats during these crunch times, the longer I'll be able to survive, and even better yet, be able to counter. The reason I want to be able to stay with Terry over the top is because of what awaits us on the other side. There's a small descent, and that leads into a four minute steeper climb. And this is where I really want to test myself with Terry. The top is right at that curve, and I've already surpassed what I was able to do two weeks ago. So now I get to test myself on that four minute climb. And again, through the magic of video, we're at the bottom of that four minute climb. My heart rate has dropped, I'm feeling good, and there are those that would consider this to be my mistake. I'm thinking that Terry's not going fast enough, so I'm going to the front, and I'm gonna put him in the hurt locker. Well, as I started to pass him, he stood up and he didn't look like he was in a hurt locker. So he's just biding his time behind me. Seeing that this can be a tactical faux pas, I double down. I'm thinking that if I go hard enough, then I'm gonna be able to keep Terry at bay. Problem is my going hard enough is gonna be about 450 watts. So I'm not gonna be able to maintain that for four minutes, but I'm not thinking about that right now. I'm just thinking about going hard. Now you see my wattage dropping a bit and reality starting to set in. Terry sees that I'm slowing down, so he attacks. Remember what I said earlier about lactate and hydrogen ions? If I could have filtered those out faster, this would not have been an issue. As soon as he attacked, I could have been right on his wheel. But 
I'm not. Terry gets a healthy amount of distance on me. But fortunately for my sake, he's not able to maintain that power. So now I'm starting to get my legs under me and I'm starting to chase him. Well, maybe not just quite yet. My power in the, up, in the insert in the upper left-hand corner shows about uh, 200 to 220 watts. So soon I'll start chasing him. As we approach the top, pretty much we held parity. Maybe I gained a little bit of distance on him, and that may be because he was just dialing back a bit. Two weeks ago, he drilled it all the way to the turnaround. Now, he was slowing up a bit, but I wasn't sure about that. That's why I was still pushing it, because I didn't want to be uh, doing this solo. I wanted to be with him on his wheel. I reconnected with Terry on the next bump, and it's only because he had dialed back a bit. And so we kept it muted until the others caught up with us. After this bump, we started talking about that initial right turn that started everything off. The best thing I heard all day was when Terry said that he went harder today than he did a couple of weeks ago. The first thing I thought of after that was my training plan is working and this is looking good for our nationals in August. After we regrouped before the turnaround and a little bit after the turnaround, we had some light spinning and talking. And then when the climb started again, then we picked up that race pace and kind of kill yourselves workout. When we got to what I consider this being our last major climb, this is about a five minute climb, this is where my first concern came about. After about a minute of pacing at around 350 to 400 watts, when, it, when the steepness got to about 7%, Terry attacked and Janine went with him. And this is the part that I was talking about before, being able to sustain power late into the race. I'm not doing it right now. Pretty much what I do next is all I can do. Wait till my body catches up and then start chasing again. After a bit when I do get my legs under me, then I do start chasing again and I put everything into it. They get to the top before I do, but I'm a lot closer and in better position. What happens now is that there's a race to that initial right turn and that's our regroup point. The next thing I have to do is catch up to Janine, then work with her to catch up to Terry. As you can tell from the previous climb, those things that I previously spoke about that I need to work on, I need to work on. That being said, I appreciated a little bit of rest that we had at the regroup point. The fun wasn't over yet, however. In this last section, this is where I experienced my failure point a couple weeks ago. After more race pacing, including up small climbs, we finally got to this last section. We had a crosswind coming from our right, and we were doing this in quick pace line fashion. This was a good training opportunity for me because of the quick turnaround for being at the front to do the pulls in combination with the wind from the side. This tends to suck the energy right out of me. Therefore, this is a mechanism where I can work on my end of race strength. Two weeks ago, we were taking longer pulls so the turnaround wasn't as great. And then eventually, I just couldn't hang onto wheels and I fell off. After three and a half minutes of doing these quick pulls at the top of a little riser, Terry attacks. I just went to the front and I don't have a lot of legs right now. Again, end of race strength. My main priority is to now work with the others and to catch Terry before the turnoff point. Both Janine and Robert go and I'm barely hanging on. I'm barely able to get onto the wheels to hang onto them. Pretty much whatever strength I have left is reserved for being reactive. In other words, somebody else attacks and then I try to get on their wheel. And I'm not always able to do that. Here you have Robert attacking. and He's bridging up to Terry. I'm, all I can do is just hang on to Janine's wheel. Basically, she's pulling me up to the breakaway attackers. And I can't do a thing to contribute. Good on her for reconnecting. Once we're up there, we're seemingly uh, going into our pacing again. Robert goes to the front and then Terry immediately attacks. Good move by Terry. Janine then jumps after him. Robert is gassed. I'm on her wheel and she again jumps and I start to uh, lose her wheel, but then I'm able to, to get back onto it. All this time I'm thinking about when I got dropped last time. Now last time when I got dropped, it was during the pace line and it was much sooner than this. Therefore I'm doing much better based on just that. So now I jump from her, she's gassed, and I'm getting up to Terry. At least I'm trying to get up to Terry. Now, I don't think he ever looked back. He just instinctually knew when to jump, and so he started applying power again. Now, I'm getting up to him, so I'm hoping that I can get over the top of this next little riser with him, and then there's a small descent, and then he pulls off to go one way, as and I pull off to go back home. Now, this is what got interesting. I am on the edge. I, I barely... 
I technically don't get on his wheel. I just, I, I die off at this point and then he continues on with his pace. I figure even though I have lots of room for improvement, it's a job well done on my part. And so I dial back so I can uh, start my way home. I rode from home to meet these guys. So I rode for about 19 miles at an endurance, uh, easy to moderate endurance pace. And then now I'm going to crawl home for about 18 to 19 miles. Crawling home is no joke. My legs were taxed. They almost felt like they went through a hard lifting session. I had pains in front of them and in back of them. And in fact, later on when I was sleeping or you know, I went to bed to go to sleep, I had to make sure that my legs were straight the entire time because if I bent them, I'd immediately go into cramping in my hamstrings. While I was going easy, Janine wasn't. So she passed me and I thought, man, I gotta get on her wheel. So now I'm just pushing whatever little strength I have left to be able to get on her wheel. So I can technically be with her when we go over the top. And, and fortunately, I'm able to do that. Robert is also giving it everything he has and is not too far behind us. Even though I have lots of things to work on, today's workout showed me that I've made improvements in the last couple of weeks and that I have a chance to be able to feel good about going to nationals in August. About 100 meters down the road, the others are going to turn left and I'm going to keep going straight. I hope you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. As always, remember, Comment, like, subscribe. The Cycling Greek.